going to take both phases of the shot put. He's going to show you how to start a beginner in the rotational shot and in the glide shot. Then he's going to also show you typical problems that result from all levels of throwers. Okay, John, we're going to take you today and we're going to show you a, a progression on how to learn how to throw the shot. By the time we're finished today, we want you to know, have an idea of how to, how to go through the standing throws, how to move across the circle, how to actually throw the shot in a, in, a, in a short time period here. The first thing we want to show you when we're showing somebody how to throw the shot, we want to show you the proper grip. The grip of the shot, the shot should rest on the ball of your hand. That's this knuckle group right here. So we want to rest the shot right on the ball of the hand, and we want the four fingers actually behind the ball. The thumb rests on the side for a little bit of uh, coordination, a little bit of direction. Some throwers like to take the pinky and also put it on the side, but I think as you get a little bit more used to it, you'll find yourself have a little bit more power with your fingers actually behind the shot. Now, we want the shot I think the best way for a beginner to learn is to place the shot under the chin. Right here, we want the shot under the chin, against the neck, on top of the shoulder. I think when we're teaching gliders, we don't want to get into a situation where we put the shot too far back, because when I try to push the shot into the thrown direction, if I push the shot too far back, my head's going to get in the way. If I push the shot a little bit lower, push it, put it against my neck, underneath my chin, now I can push that shot in a straight line. The key here is keeping the hand, the fingers behind the ball and putting the ball against your neck. What we don't want is the fingers underneath the ball and then having the fingers on top of the shoulder. If we do that, that's going to cause us to throw in this manner. And if I throw in this manner, I'll be throwing the ball more like a baseball instead of pushing it like a shot put. Okay? Now, after we learn how to grip the ball, then we want to go into a proper release. When I go to release the shot put, we can call it taking a one-handed chest pass in basketball. When I take a chest pass, or when I go to throw a chest pass in basketball, what do I do? I take my hands in, and I follow through away. So my fingers are always pointing through away. That's our follow through. Now, if I drop my left arm and did the same thing with just one hand, I'm going to think about always flicking my wrist and pointing my fingers away. So that's going to be the follow through. So we're going to start up here, and when I go to release the ball, I push, I push, and we follow through away. We don't want to guide the shot put. What we talk about guiding the shot put is, is when we point our fingers in the direction of the throw. And we also don't want to take a basketball free throw shot. If I put my hand underneath the shot and push that way on a basketball free throw shot, we point our fingers down. So again, at the end of the shot, when I go to push the shot out, I extend my arm and I follow the shot put or take my fingers and point them away from the direction of throw. Okay, John, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to each pick up a shot. We'll pick up a shot and we're going to bend at the waist. We're going to bend at the waist and look straight down at the ground. I want my, my chest and my back parallel to the ground. So we're going to bend over. We're going to take the shot, put my non-throwing hand underneath the shot and put my throwing hand behind the shot, or in this case, on top of the shot. And what I'm going to do is just extend my arm and throw the shot into the ground, making sure each time we're releasing and we're following through away from where the ball is being thrown. So go ahead, do that a few times. There you go. Now always hold the finished position so you can check yourself. Very good. Do it one more. Very good. You just throw it right into the ground. Good. Now what we want to do, John, is we're going to take that and go through several release drills. The first thing we're going to do is start on our knees. So what we want to do is get on one knee. If you're a right-handed thrower, which you are, get on your right knee. You're going to take your throwing hand, act like you have a shot put correctly under your chin, against your neck. Take your non-throwing arm and leave the non-throwing arm out, extended, and parallel to the ground. When we say so, when I say so, all you want to do in this drill is simply extend your throwing arm. Just extend your throwing arm. Now right here when we place the shot underneath, we want to keep our elbow up, but we don't want to have it so far up that it's in an uncomfortable position. Keep the elbow nice and comfortable, keep it up. We obviously don't want to drop it way down here. If we drop it way down here, 
the shot's going to come away from our neck. So we want to keep that shot right into our neck. Okay, ready? Go ahead, throw. Good, back, throw. Good, again, throw. Now let's try to do the same thing with this shot. Just take the shot, put it under your chin, and just drop it off. Don't try and break any world records here. Go ahead, throw. Hold your finished position, good. Here, take another one, throw. Good, one more. Throw. Okay, now we're gonna take this same drill and we're gonna start bringing in the left side of my body, or in this case, the left arm. What I wanna do here, right now, at our finished position in the throw, we actually bring this left arm in. What I want to do at this throwing arm is extending, I'm going to bring this hand right to the shoulder. So we actually want to make a little bit of a fist. Don't squeeze too hard. As the throwing arm is extending, this arm comes in. We can liken this to trying, to trying to elbow somebody that's trying to pickpocket you. If I'm trying to pickpocket you, if you're standing up, stand up, John. If you're standing up and I sneak in behind you and I'm trying to pickpocket you, what you want to do is elbow me in the head so that I, I don't get your money. If you take this elbow and go straight back, instead of straight down, if I go straight back, that's gonna cause too much rotation of your shoulders. Well, what's gonna happen if you go straight back, the pickpocket's gonna get your money and run away from you. So what you're trying to do is elbow the pickpocketer in the head at the same time you're extending your throwing arm. So let's get back down on one knee. And take the shots, place it correctly under your chin, Left arm out. Okay, ready? Throw. Very good. And the shoulders always stay squared, but remember we got to follow through. Don't guide the shot put out. Okay, very good. The next progression or the next drill is we want to always talk about keeping the shot back. Now, when we line up the shot through a lot of the things we'll do, we line up the shot behind our right hip. So we're going to start in position one here. And when we say position two, you want to turn both shoulders all the way back so that now the shot put is behind the right hip. From this point, we're just going to do the same thing, which is going to cause us to get a little bit longer push on the ball. So now I'm pushing the ball from way back here to up through the front. The thing we don't want to do is just unwind the shoulders and throw. From this position, we're still just going to extend the throwing arm and take the non-throwing arm towards the shoulder. Okay, the shoulders will square up naturally. You don't have to worry about pulling. Definitely don't pull your head. Keep your chin right in line with your sternum here. And we're going to throw. Go ahead, throw. Very good. Let's do it a couple of times with the shot puts. Uh, set, set. Again, we're not trying to break any world records here. You're just trying to work on your release. Go ahead, position one first, John. We'll go position one, always work in a backward sequence. Position two, both shoulders turn back, left arm is facing away from, 90 degrees away from our start position at position one. Ready, throw. Very good, nice and easy. Position one first, John, always work back. Position one, position two, throw. Very good. We're going to take this now, and we want to start teaching you how to use your legs. Right now, we've done several release drills. Now we're going to start teaching you how to use your lower body. The lower body is obviously the muscle groups, or contains the muscle groups that are the strongest in my body. I want to use those muscle groups first before I use any of the muscle groups of my upper body. If I do that, it is also going to allow me to apply proper forces to the ball. What we're going to do it's very easy for us as coaches to say, use your legs, use your legs, use your legs. But we want to start showing you and training your body to work in a proper sequence so that your body teaches itself how to use its legs first, then upper body second. We're going to set the same position that we're in. The only difference is that we're going to now take, just so I can show you here, we're going to now take this back foot and tuck, it, tuck the toes underneath the shin a little bit. We want the left foot out, nice and uh, a nice wide base here. Get the left foot out in front of you. So right here, we're going to get in position one. Then we're going to next movement we're going to do 
is to just stand up out of our legs. Now when I stand up, I want to keep my weight centered. We talk about the shot getting on an elevator here. We're in the basement. The shot put's going to get on an elevator, and it's going to take that elevator right up to the top floor. So we're just going to stand up straight. Stand, back down. Takes a little bit of strength here, too, because you, you're squatting your own body weight. What we don't want to do is shift forward, liking the fact that we're in the basement looking for the staircase, and then stand up just out of my front leg. Okay. Again, put the shot on an elevator, and we're coming straight up. Very good. Do that again. Ready? Straight up, down, full extension of both legs. Straight up, finish position. We'll be on the back toe just like you are, and we'll be flat footed with the front foot. Okay, one more. Up. Now, from that position, what do you think we can do? Throw. See the sequence of movements? Legs first, upper body second. Let's do that again. Ready? Up. Throw. Very good. Let's try it with the shot. Ready, up. Full extension. Throw. Good. Now, we can take this one step further. If we take position one, remember we talked about the shot always wanting to be behind the right hip? So we take position one to position two. Now we're going to stand up the same way. Now the key is, as we're standing up, you want to keep your upper body back here. Okay? As you're standing up, don't open up your upper body. Just keep your upper body facing right towards me. Okay? Ready? Up. All the way up. Throw. Very good. Okay, John, we've worked on some release drills. We've worked on sequence of movement drills where you're working your legs first, upper body second. Now we'll move it into the circle. We're going to start working our feet and talk about body position and, and foot position. Basically, John, when we set up, we want to set up a little bit wider than shoulder width with our feet. That's a good starting position, a little bit wider than shoulder width and with our feet. Now, a lot of coaches talk about a toe-to-toe -to -toe alignment. So my toe from each foot is aligned right down a straight line. Some coaches talk about the opposite. They talk about the heel-to-toe alignment. Why don't we come someplace in the middle, and we're going to take our left toe and align it with our right, our right instep. So let's just start in this position, and you're going to move up here closer to the, the toe board, and all you're going to do is step back into a position that's a little bit wider than shoulder width. Okay? So line up your left toe to the right heel. Now step back, step back, a little bit wider than shoulder width. Very good. First thing we talk about, we talk about working from the ground on up. What's the first thing on the ground? My feet. So we've got to work our feet first. When we're throwing, let's start from the side here. The first thing we want to do is just take your right foot very simply and take the right heel and move your right heel up. Go ahead. Turn your foot. Turn. That's it. Do it again. Right here, our legs are straight. Turn your foot. You want to turn that as much as you possibly can. It's just like you're crushing out a bug or you're trying to hit my my foot with the heel of your foot. Go ahead, turn. Very good. All right? Now, we're going to start moving into uh, what we call a side stand and throw position. So what we want you to do is take your body weight and move it all over your right leg. The whole, your whole body weight. We're still going to be sideways for right now. We're going to be on the inside of this foot. And we're going to be, knees going to be bent over the toe just like you are. That's a good position from the side. From this position, all we want to do, this time we're not going to turn, we're just going to extend. Extend your leg. Don't do that. Don't try to come towards me first. Just extend your leg back to your stop position. Okay? So just extend your leg back to your stop position. Good. Back. Good. Okay? Now, what we're going to do, let's set your left leg up a little bit better. Soften up a little bit here. Soften up. There you go. Now, we want to put both of those together. So as my leg's extending, as my leg's extending, we can turn my foot. It happens together. My foot turns and my leg extends. And that's going to cause me just to come right up over this front foot. OK, ready? Go. Very good. OK. Go. Now, from this position, what do you think we can do? Take a release drill. So we're always working backwards. So let's do that. 
you move back into a side power position or a side standing throw position. Okay, go back to your position. I'm going to get out of the way. Okay, go. Very good, very good. Let's do that again. So the legs are working first, then the upper body's working second. Good, good solid position up front. Now let's take this to more of a full standing throw position. Now we want to keep our feet sideways as much as possible. That will keep our hips active. If, uh, if our hips are active, if our lower body is active, it allows me uh, to, to work my lower body ahead of the shot even more directly. So now we get back, come back to our side standing throw position. Now all we got to do is turn your shoulders back to this position. Keeping, both, keeping into your legs, keeping your knees bent. We want our shoulders back just a little bit, but we don't want to bend at the waist. Okay, that's a good, good, pretty good stand and throw position. That's a good power position. Ultimately, whether we're, we're rotating or doing the glide, we want to get to a proper power position. Okay, so now from this position, we're going to do the same thing. Now just do it slow. Ready? It's the first thing that's going to work is your right leg is going to extend and turn. Your upper body is just going to fall. Go. Very good. And as you see, when we do that, we actually lead with the hip a little bit. By working this right foot and this right leg, our hip actually starts to lead the throw. OK, John, one way we can think about this is as that we're a ski jumper coming off a ski ramp. If you watch those ski jumpers, what do they do? When they get off that ramp, they get way out over their skis, keeping their whole body straight. Well, we can think of ourselves as being one-legged ski jumpers, where I come off that ramp and I get this whole side of my body. This is the side that we're working off the ski jump, so we're going to come way out over that ski or over those skis. See how the, long, the left side keeps in a long, straight line? All your weight right now is over the right side. From that point, now we can take this to a different sport. Maybe we can call this boxing now. Make a fist right here. One thing you want to always think about is accelerating the shot through the point of a release or through the point of attack. If I was, had somebody up here, if somebody was trying to attack you from the front that was a little bit taller than you, and you wanted to hit that person, or if you wanted to punch that person, you can generate a lot of power if you punch that person using your whole right side. So now act like you're going to punch at my hand up front. Go ahead. Punch right through it. Very good. See the force? Because you use your whole right side, you can punch right through my hand. If you just stood there and just used my, your arm and not your lower body, there's not much power in that. So what we're going to do, we're going to come off. You're going to take a shot put. You're going to come off. You're going to start high. You're going to come off that ski ramp. OK, come off that ski ramp. Go ahead. Form the long left side. Get way out over those skis. OK, now. You get to the bottom of the hill, and some guy's coming up and trying to attack you, and you're going to punch him. Ready? Punch. Very good. Shoulders are going to be turned back. Now we're coming off the ski jump, right? Come off the ski jump. We're that one-legged ski jumper, so we get way beyond our skis. Long left side. Shoulders back. Now some guy, you're at the bottom of the ski hill. Some guy is trying to attack you from up front. At the same time, another guy is trying to take your money. So you want to punch right through that guy that's trying to attack you from up front. At the same time, try to elbow that guy that's trying to take your money. OK? Ready? Go. Very good. Very good. See how proud you are up front and solid and strong you are up front? That's how you want to feel at the end of every throw. All right, John. We've gone through a power position. Now let's start talking about some move or movement across the circle. If I'm a glider, the first thing I want to do, if I was setting up in the back of the circle, you're going to act, I'm going to act as a, as a fence. So what you're going to do is act, just grab my hands here, and all I want to see you do first is jump up and down with your right foot. Jump up and down. Take some air. Very good. Okay. Now, relax. Now I'll take your left leg, bring your knee in, and extend it back to the ground. So bring your knee in. Extend it to the ground. Knee in, extend to the ground. If you can do those two movements right there, you can effectively do a glide. The next motion we want to do with our right foot, stand up, we want to jump up 
and turn my right foot. Remember all the things we did from the standing throw, we always had our hips hacked active. Right now your foot is pointing to the back of the circle. At some point in the throw, we want to get your foot pointing 90 degrees from where it first started. Okay, so once we get in the air, we have to turn our foot. So all we want to do right now, you want to jump up and turn your right foot. That's it. Try not to turn your left foot though. Just jump up and turn just your right. There you go. One more time. Up and turn. Good. One more. This time land a little bit lower. Ready? Land low. There you go. Good. All right. Now we're going to jump up and turn and place our left foot down. Up, turn, left foot down. Ready? Up, turn, left foot down. What position is this? Power position. Power position. Very good. Okay. Let's do it again. Up, turn, left foot down. Now, this time, when your left foot comes down, try to get your feet down together. Ready? Go. Good. Now we're going to do it with a shot. I want you to hold the shot. I'm going to just hold your left arm so we can keep your shoulders back. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to jump, land, feel that power position, then take a standing throw. Okay? Ready? Go. Okay, don't start, don't start bringing your shoulders forward yet. Let's do it again. Keep your shoulders back. Just work with your lower body. That's it. I'll let go of your hand. Now take that standing throw. Good. Okay? Now let's do it once without me holding you back. So basically my lower body is working underneath my upper body. That's it. Let's see how my le left arm is flailing out here. Keep your left arm back here. Do it one more time. Keep your left arm right back towards me. Just like you're grabbing onto that fence. There you go. Now take that stand and throw. Okay, very good. Very good. All right, next, I want to have your hands again. Now we have to get some motion into the throw. Okay, we're not going across the circle yet. We're just talking about getting out of the back of the circle. Now we want to get some motion into the throw. So what we're going to do is start up high, and we want to bring our left knee in as I'm sitting. Okay, this type of action. I start up high, I'm over my right leg, sit, bring your left knee in. Okay, start up high, get, get your weight totally over your right leg. Left foot starts behind over here. Okay, now as your left knee comes in, just sit. Good. Now bring your left knee in and take your left foot off the ground. Ready? Go. That's it. Pretty good position. Ready? Go. All right. Now we're going to come to that position. Stop. Then jump. Get to our power position. So let's get you a shot. Put. Okay. I'll hold you back the first time. So we'll do it in two steps. We'll go step one, which is down, then step two is up and feel our power position. I'll let go of you. You'll take a standing throw. Okay, ready? Step one, down. Step two, power position. Now throw. Very good. Now, John, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to take out stopping after I come to that down position. So now you're going to just make it nice and smooth. I'll say go. You'll come down first, jump up, Land in your power position. Okay, ready? Go. I'll let go of your hand. Take a stand and throw. Very good. What did you forget to do? You forget to elbow the person trying to steal your money, right? But everything else was very good. Okay, now let's you do it without me holding your hand, but you want to still act like you're holding my hand. Okay, act like you're reaching for something back here. Go. Not bad. Take your standing throw. Good, good, good standing throw that time. All right, so basically we're getting out of the back to a power position, but we're not moving yet. So now we've got to get some movement to the whole throw. All right, what we want to do first, I just want to see you jump backwards. Okay, we're just going to hop backwards. Don't be afraid to take a low air, just hop backwards nice and easy. Go ahead. Good. Okay? Do it with a shot. Act like you have a shot into it. 
Come back to the back of the circle. Ready? Hop backwards. Good. Okay, now, John, you're going to hold the shot. You're going to act like you have the shot. Okay, I'm going to hold you back. I'm just going to walk behind you. You're going to hop backwards. And on the third hop, you're going to put your left foot down and get into your power position. So it's going to be one, two, three. Okay? Ready? Go. One, two, three. Good, good. Let's start a little further back this time. Start a little further back. Start right inside the circle. And we'll go two hops, okay? Just two hops. On the second hop, we'll land in our power position. Ready? One, two. Power position. Now take a stand and throw. Very good. Very good. Okay? Now, we're just going to do one hop backwards. Okay, ready? So you're going to come down and take one hop. Ready? Go ahead. Okay. Keep your shoulders back. And over your right. Very good. Throw. Good. Okay, John, now we want to do the whole thing without me holding your left arm back. One thing you can do is think that you're reaching for me or reaching for a fence or reaching for something back here. And at the same time, watch something in the back of the circle. That will help keep your head back. So maybe watch my shoe right here. Okay, so as you glide across, left arm stays back, shoulders stay back. You're going to glide, then stop in your power position. Okay? Go ahead. Okay, not bad. Let's do it one more time. I'm going to reach for something with your left arm. Reach for my hand. I'm going to put my hand right here. You reach for it. Ready? Go. Okay, not bad. Do it again. Not bad. We want to come up in the ear a little bit. When we're first learning, we want to get in the ear a little bit. Okay? Remember those hop backwards? Okay. Ready? Go. Much better, much better. That's a pretty good power position. John, now that we've gone over everything, we're going to take a full throw. When we take a full throw, I think the most important thing that you need to do is as you're gliding across the circle, is to keep your shoulders back, keep your head back. So we take a full throw. Go ahead, try to put it all together now. All right, not bad at all, not bad at all. Let's take one more. What you want to do is get to a nice solid power position. When you get out of the back of the circle, try to pull your right leg underneath you a little bit better so we get to a better power position. Come down first. Down. Much better. See how much more solid you were up front? That was very good. Okay, John, what we've gone is gone through all the progressions to the whole throw. We've started with release drills. We first started with talking about how to hold the shot. We've talked about release drills. We've talked about sequence of movement drills. We've gone through the movement through the circle. And now those are the things you need to work on and work on consistently and constantly those types of fundamentals that will allow you to keep improving. You did a great job today. Tim, we've gone all through the release drills. We've gone through some sequence of movements drills. Uh, we've showed you the proper standing throw. We showed you the proper power position. Basically, those positions are the same between the rotation style of throwing and the glide style of throwing. Now what we want to show you where the difference comes in. We want to show you uh, about the rotation of the particular style that you, want to, uh, you choose to do and how that is different to the, the glide style. First thing we want to do, Tim, is that we're going to start and do a drill we call the mirror drill. Basically, we're going to set up uh, power position, and what I want to do is to turn to another power position. How I'm going to do that, I'm going to take my left foot right through in a straight line, so I'm going to pick up my left foot. As I'm picking up my left foot, I'm going to turn my right foot and land in another power position. And I'll do the same thing back to the start position. Okay, so let's start in a power position up front by the toe board. Get a little bit away from the toe board so you don't hit it, okay? Ready? So good solid power position. Okay, bend your knees a little bit. All right, now, 
pivot. Ready? Pivot to another power position. Go ahead. Pretty good. Do it again. Okay. Pivot to a power position here. Go ahead. Now hold that position. Now pivot to a power position to get back to the original starting position. Tim, to do this correctly, you have to keep your weight over your right leg. And the first movement that you need to think about moving is this right foot. Okay, so as we're stepping through, make sure you turn that right foot. That will keep your weight over your right. Are you ready? Turn. Very good. Very good. Do it again. Turn. Very good. All right. Now let's try the same thing with a shot put. Ready? Turn. Ready? Turn. Good. Okay. Now we're going to take it turn, turn, stop, then throw. Okay? Let's do it. Ready? Turn. Ready? Turn. Good. Balance yourself. You could be a little bit better over your right. Now take a nice easy stand and throw. Go ahead. Good. For the purposes of the drill, try not to step over like that. Try to keep both feet on the ground at the, at the finish. Make sure we turn our right foot. You have to initiate your action with your right foot. If I put this cone right here, you want the heel of your right foot to hit that cone. Okay, ready? Go. That's it. That's it. See how much more balanced you were and how you keep your weight over your right leg? Okay, do it again. Ready? Turn. Very good. Very good. Okay, now take a stand and throw. Throw. Good. Good. Now, we're just going to do one drill, or one segment of that drill, and we're going to take it and keep rotating into the throw. So now I'm going to set up on this side, and instead of stopping in the power position, I'm going to turn my right foot and keep it turning all the way through the throw. The key is, is to keep your right foot turning. You never stop your right foot. Once we start our right foot, it keeps turning into the throw. Okay? Let's try it once without the shot, then we'll do it with the shot. So we're starting uh, at this point right now. Go ahead. You're going to set a power position here. Set a power position here. That's it. Now you're going to turn towards the toe board and keep your right foot turning. Go ahead. Keep turning into the throw. Go. Turn into the throw. That's it. Actually release the ball. Turn and release. Good. Let's do that again. Okay. Turn and release. That's it. Let's try it with the ball. Do it nice and easy. Don't try and throw too far. Just keep things rolling, moving. Keep things moving, especially with that right side. Good. Thing you did there is you pulled your head. The next time we do this, make sure you're looking right where you want to throw the ball. When you finish, you're going to be looking right into the direction of throw. That's it. See how solid and and balance that is, very good. What we want to do now is start working from the back of the circle. And we set up in the back, nice and balanced, feet a little, about shoulder width apart, bend your knees a little bit. And I'm just going to basically wind the shot back a little bit. And that's a good position. When you wind the shot back, you're nice and balanced. First thing we want to do is we want to get used to carrying our right leg or right foot low to the ground. We don't want to kick it up way behind me. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come back to the throwing position. As your left foot starts to pivot, you bring your right foot around and just touch the bottom of the cone, not the top of the cone, the bottom of the cone. Ready? Go. That's it. You can pivot your left foot a little bit better than that this time. Ready? Go. OK, pivot your left foot. Turn your left foot as you're bringing your right Turn your left foot as you're bringing your right foot off. Ready? Go. That's it. That's good. That's very good. Now we're going to do the same thing, but now we want to bring the right foot all the way around so that we hit the base of the cone way off to this side. 
So basically, you're going to pivot until your body faces the direction of throw. Good, good, that's very good. Now, you want to bring your right foot all the way around like that, nice and wide and low. When you bring it to this position, what we want to see now is from this position, just lift up your right knee. You're going to be standing here on one leg. Okay, nice and wide. Act like you're about to touch the cone, and then bring the knee up. Nice and wide, now bring the knee up. Good. Next thing we're going to do is you're going to come nice and wide like that. Knee's going to come up. When I get to this point, knee comes up, and let yourself land in the center of the circle nice and low. Let the ground come to you. What position does this similar to? That, the power position drill, and we did that mirror drill. So that's like the start of that mirror drill. But let's do that. Come nice and wide. Knee up, land in the center. Wide, knee up. That's good. That's a good position. Now, what do you think we can do from here? Do the mirror drill. Go ahead. Mirror. Good. Now take a standing throw. Very good. Let's do that one more time. Nice and wide, knee up, land in the middle. Now pivot. Now take a standing throw. Keep both feet on the ground during your standing throw right now. Go. Good. Good. Now let's do the same thing, but let's make it all continuous to the power position. So I'm going to bring the knee out, then up. I'm going to bring the right leg out, then up and do the pivot drill to the power position. So just make it continuous, don't stop. There you go. Good, stop in your power position. Let's do it again. What we wanna do, Tim, is to bring the right leg out wide, then the knee up, get to the middle, and keep turning to our power position. We don't wanna throw yet, we wanna just end up in our power position. So keep the movement continuous to our power position. Very good, very good. Stop. Now show me a stand and throw. All right, good. Now let's do the same thing, but make it continuous through the power position. Don't switch feet up front. Just make it continuous to the power position and throw. Okay, so the whole movement's going to be continuous. It's going to be slow and balanced, but the whole movement will be continuous. Don't think about jumping up and turning around. Just keep rotating around. Go wide, up, through, keep rotating. Good. Do it again. Go wide, up, keep rotating, through. Very good. Very good. So we've gone through the movements of the turn. We've gone through the steps of the turn. Now let's take a full throw, but do it at that pace. Try not to go too fast. All right. So now you've taken a, a full throw at a slow pace. Now let's take a full throw at a quicker pace. Now, the key with the full throw is to accelerate constantly. Which, to accelerate constantly, we have to start out very slow and then move a little faster as we go through the circle. The key is to starting out slow. Don't try to go too fast in the back. Start out slow and then accelerate as you go through the circle. And you can take a full throw where you switch feet. Good, very good. Okay, Adrian, pretty good throw. Listen, come over here for a sec. Let me show you something. When you come across, act like you're coming across the circle. Come across the circle. Okay, go ahead, come across the circle. The first action you did that time wasn't bad, but the first action was to open these shoulders a little bit. 
So the next time we get in, next time we get in, I want you to act like there's a fence or something back here that you're reaching for. Go ahead, do another glide and reach for the fence. See how that keeps you back? And now from there, we have a long push on the shot where we can attack it. All right, good. What, I, what we'd like to see is a little bit, of, let's act like we're throwing this way now. What we'd like to see, what you're doing is very good, but what we'd like to see a little bit more rhythm into the throw. What we want to do is start up a little high, start up high, and then go down and across the circle. Right now, starting real low like this and just trying to glide across the circle is not too powerful. What we want to do is set some rhythm. Go down first, take a seated action, and then go across your, the circle. Your, your glide, your actual glide is pretty good, but let's start up tall. Ready? You're going to sit down first. Ready? Sit, then go. Okay, now do the same thing and make it a continuous motion. Down and then go. Go. Much better. See how there's a little bit more power in that? You generate more power across the circle, then we're going to be able to continue that velocity into the throw. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. What we like about the throw is that you're, you're, standing in a, you're landing in a good double support base up front. You're keeping your feet on the ground. You're not switching your feet too early. We've got to do a little bit better job getting across the circle. And you do have a little bit of a tendency to pull your head. So next time you get in the circle, when you're going across the circle, pick a point back here. Pick a point back here where you're just going to glide and keep your head on that point as long as possible. OK? Good. That's a good, aggressive move up front. The only thing is that you tend to have a tendency to throw your shoulders back. The next time you get in the circle, just try to keep your shoulders over this way a little bit. So when I glide, I can land in that good, strong power position, keeping my shoulders back. Your glide that time, your shoulders drop back this way, so your weight all started coming forward, and we get away from that strong power position. Good. I tell you what, you get great lift on the ball. That was good. You get great lift on the ball. You pulled your head a little bit. If next time you keep your head back, you're going to get a much longer push on the ball, and then you'll even get a greater lift on the ball. But you got a good, good idea about using your legs under the, under the ball. Next time, just keep your head back. Head, watch something right in, right in back of the circle. OK. Good throw, good move across the circle. Up front, you have to be a little bit more aggressive with the velocity. What we want to do is think about punching at something or through something. Set in your power position. Set in your stand and throw position. I'm going to hold my right hand or my left hand right here and you think about punching right through that hand. Ready? Go. Good. Do it again. Ready? Go. See the force behind that? You can get that type of force at the end of the throw, then it's really going to take off for you. Good, that's a good job. You got to get a little bit better drive across the circle with your left leg. So next time you get in the circle, take your left leg as your right leg is driving, take your left leg and drive it straight back towards that toe board. If you do that, the ball's really going to take off for you. OK, good, good. Hold your head a little bit. You started peeking to see where you wanted to go with the ball. Next time, just pick a point back here in the back of the circle. As you glide across, watch something. That will keep your head back, will keep your shoulders back, allow you to get a longer push on the ball. All right, that's a good rotational throw. I think what you want to do, being a rotator, accelerate through the circle. You have a tendency of going a little bit too fast at the beginning. Next time you get in there, set in the back of the circle, be a little bit slow, and just try to get this right leg a little bit wider. That will help slow you down, and then you can accelerate through the circle. OK, well, you're a more experienced thrower. You're a, a very good thrower. I think the one thing you did on that throw 
You moved very well across the circle. You attacked well up front. You left your right leg behind you a little bit. The next time you get in the circle, once I get out of the back, try to pull that right knee right underneath so I can get that right leg right back in, in underneath me so I don't land spread out with my weight back to my left. That's good, Adrian. We like what you did that time. That was very good. You kept that long left arm, kept your shoulders back. That was very good. I really don't have much to say about that throw. We probably could turn our feet a little bit more underneath. When I come across the circle, we want to take my right foot and turn it as much as possible to keep my hips active. All right, good. You established a much better rhythm that time. Remember we said go down first, then across the circle. Now we got to continue that velocity through the front. When we continue that velocity to, through the front, think of taking that shot and pushing through the shot put up front. Don't just push at the shot put. Take that hand and push it right through like you're trying to push through a wall. Nice throw, nice throw. Good, strong double support up front. That's what we like to see. Ah! All right, there we go. Good. Good job across the circle. You drop your head a little bit up front. When we come through, keep your head up. That doesn't mean look at the sky, just, but just keep your chin off your sternum. Just keep your head up here. But other than that, that was great. That was a good move across the circle. You really kept a good velocity on the shot at the front of the circle. Good, nice throw, nice throw. Open your shoulders up a little bit as you came across the circle. If we can keep your shoulders back, keep your shoulders squared to the back of the circle. As I come across, squared to the back of the circle, then the shot's really gonna take off for you. That's a nice throw, that's a nice throw. Up front, you fell back a little bit. When you went to go throw, you didn't continue the move out beyond the toe board. Think about, next time, think about taking that shot more on a line drive. Don't try to get artificial height by bending at the waist. Just think about taking it straight out into the throwing direction. Very good. Good throw. Good move across the circle. You stayed in a nice, strong double support up front. That was a very good throw. That's it. See how much better in control you were across the circle that time? That was because you started off much slower. Last time you started off a little bit too fast. This time we started off much slower. It was able to keep you, you were able to keep yourself in control through the, through the whole move of the rotation. Okay. Again, you left your right leg behind you. Uh, but you still moved well across the circle. You do a great job of kicking with your left side, and you have a nice rhythm through the throw, but if we can just try to pull that knee underneath you a little bit better, you can either try pulling the knee underneath you or actually try pulling that knee to the chest once I get out of the back of the circle. 